right. Thank you. Uh, thank you, band. That was incredible. I love uh, worship music. It just kind of gets you into a place where you are open uh, and available to actually hear what God has to say. And so I always just tell you, just get as much out of the time of worship so that you are able to hear what God has in store for you. Now, we're starting a, uh, a whole series on habits. Now, Mark kicked it off last week. It was incredible. And so this week, I'm going to take the second part, and we're talking about prayer. Because the truth is, unless you have certain habits, there are certain spiritual disciplines, right? And if you want to grow in your faith, if that's something that you do want to, want to do over the course of the next year, then it's going to take a little bit of work. It's going to take some habits. It's going to take consistency. These are the things. Just anything in your life, it takes consistency. You have to work at it. And so today we're going to talk about prayer, and I'm going to actually teach you how to pray. I'm going to give you very practical stuff, but before I want to dig into exactly how we're going to pray, I want to talk about why we pray. Because the truth is, is I can teach you how to do it, but unless you know why, unless you really understand why and it's important to you, then then it won't ever actually become a habit. See, that's the thing, is it, it has to matter to you. And so I want to talk about why we pray. And so first of all, you know, we all know that it's talking to God. Prayer is having a conversation, sitting, talking to God. And the most important part of that is it's not just a conversation. Like, you get that, right? It's not just you talking to God. More happens in that conversation than you could ever imagine. And when you really lean into it, and when you really take it for, uh, for as, as important as it is, then more will happen. And the other thing about prayer that's so important to understand is, is it's not just you talking to somebody else. It's not just you and your buddy talking, right? The person on the other end of the line is God. He is all-powerful, all-knowing, he knows the end from the beginning. That means he knows the future. He knows how it all turns out. Wouldn't you want advice from someone who can tell you what happens tomorrow? God stands in your tomorrow and tells you how it's going to be. He gives you peace in, in, in your today about tomorrow. I wish I could get stock tips from God, but that's not how that works. But the truth is, is that God is all-powerful. He can do anything. God is all-knowing, and he is everywhere all at once. And so talking to God is it's, it's something that we should all cherish. We should all give great importance to because that's the most important conversation you could ever have. But a lot of the time, we don't treat it like that. It seems like, oh, something we have to do, or I don't really know how to do. And the thing that I really want you to understand, I want you to take away um, more than anything is... I'm going to show you how to pray, but the way you talk to God, he wants you to be yourself. He wants you to say it in the way that you feel it. He wants to hear your heart in the conversation. Don't feel like that you need to have some Old Testament way of speaking or it's not right. You know, you hear some people pray and they pray these incredible, like, it sounds like it's actually Jesus talking through that person. And some people are like, I can't really pray like that. Well, God doesn't want you to pray like that. He wants you to pray like you pray. He wants you to talk like you're talking to your best friend, like you're pouring your heart out to someone that you love. He wants to hear your heart. You know, when my daughter was young, she had a funny way of saying Chick-fil-A. She would say, Chippy Lay. She says, Bobby, can we go to Chick Chippy Lay? And at no point did I ever say, no, stupid, that's not how you say it. <laughs> because it was cute, and I thought it was adorable. But the truth is, is she got it wrong. But because I love her, I didn't worry about how she said it. And that's how God feels about you. He doesn't worry about how you say things. He just wants to hear your heart. But you have to understand that you are talking to God. God has all of these incredible powers, all of these things, and you have to understand that it is the most important conversation that you get to have on a regular basis. You know, I remember I went to a conference one time. It was for my business, and it was this big conference. Thousands and thousands of people go to this conference, 
And one thing that I was super excited about was the keynote speaker. It was the main guy that was there, real successful, amazing guy, leader in, in his business, in his personal life, amazing person. I was like, man, I'm going to that. So people come from all around the country. Thousands of people go to this conference. I had to drive there. I think it was Dallas, get a hotel. And so that morning of the conference, I said, you know what, I'm going to get up early. I want to get my day started early and, and, and start off real strong. And so I get up early, go to the gym, like no one's in the hotel. It's just people working there, me. And I walk into the gym, and there's the guy, the keynote speaker, the guy who is just incredibly rich and famous and all these, like, powerful, this great guy. He's there, and it's just me and him. And so I'm just like, oh, this is really happening. And I'm like, be cool, be cool, be cool. I think I said it out loud a couple of times, and I'm like, okay, just really be cool, dude. And so I, I sat there, and I was like, okay, I don't want to interrupt his his workout, because the conference starts in like an hour, and so I'm just going to like calm down. And I thought, like, what is the one question that I would want to ask this guy? Now, he gets paid thousands of dollars to give people coaching advice, so he's not going to sit and talk to me for 20 minutes. And I also didn't want to interrupt his workout, because I wouldn't want somebody to do that to me. And so I was like, okay, I'm sitting there, waiting for the right moment, waiting for him to, you know, look like he's got a moment to talk, and and uh, when, when things were kind of over for me, and I, and I formed this, like, concise question. It was actually why I went to the conference. I really wanted help with this one area in my business. And so sure enough, he starts wrapping up. He grabs his water bottle. He's walking out. I like, grab my stuff real quick. And I walk over, and I was like, hey, you know, I'm here for the conference. And I lay this question on him. And sure enough, he talks to me for a few minutes. Nice guy. And he gives me some good advice. Now, here's the thing. The reason why I tell you that story is because... I was really excited to be able to talk to him, some dude, a businessman. You know, he might be famous, and he might be rich, and he might be successful, but he's nothing in comparison to God. But I sat there super excited, like trying to form the perfect question for some guy. And that's the thing is, is like, that's not how God works. God says, come to me anytime you want. I'm here anytime you want, anytime you need help. Isaiah, this great verse in Isaiah, it says, call to me and I will answer you. I will tell you marvelous and wondrous, wondrous things that you could never figure out on your own. What is he saying? He says, come to me anytime you want and I'm going to give you, I'm going I'm to give you incredible things. But yet, we don't treat our time with God like that. We treat it like, oh, you know, I got to do it. All right, okay, in the morning. Hey, God, what's going on? Uh, dear Heavenly Father, uh, hallowed be thy name. You know, that's not how he wants it to be. But we should, we should treat it with such importance. We should treat it with, with such passion, just the same excitement and expectation that I was trying or was thinking about this one guy. That's the same way we should treat our prayer time with God. That's the same way that we should treat it every day. Go in with expectation. One of the things that I love that uh, Pastor Greg says, he says, we should look for a real encounter with God. We should always be looking for a real encounter with God. See, that's where transformation happens. That's for where real stuff happens. That's why I say get as much out of the time of worship because that's a time for you to connect with God. It's the same thing with prayer. Don't go in rapid. Don't go in rushing it. Don't go in trying to be somebody else and just say a few things. Don't give God a shout out. No, no, no. We should treat it with importance because it's a, it's a chance to encounter and have time with the all-powerful, all-knowing, ever-present God. And we should treat it that way. And so you guys are going to go through a lot in your life. And... You're going to need answers to questions. And the funny part about it is, is that like, we ask Siri stuff, we Google stuff, and we ask Alexa for help. But where do we leave God? See, the truth is you're going to make a billion decisions throughout the course of your life. And you're going to need help with those decisions. And God is there to help you guide your path. And all of that happens in prayer. 
You're going to go through battles. You're going to experience some good things, some difficult things. And what is going to keep you on track? What is going to keep you from falling apart? See, it's our prayer time. It's our time that we spend with God that he helps us, that he comforts us, that he guides us. You see, you guys are young and you haven't been through too much yet. Some of you have. But here's the thing is it's that time in prayer. It's that conversation you have with God. It's those real encounters that you have, that you are able to have every day. They're going to keep you on track. Some of you have big goals in life. But here's the thing. The bigger the goal, the bigger the enemies, the bigger the difficulties. And sometimes it doesn't go the way you want it to. But how do you stay on track? You see, the Israelites were given a big destiny. They were supposed to go to the promised land. But what happened? They got off track. What is going to keep you from falling away in fear and discouragement? Because that exists. Trust me, you start out with big ideas, big goals. You're going to do something amazing. But somehow, little by little, you get off course. See, when I was a kid, I remember going to the beach. I was with my family. And I'm, I, I decided that uh, I was fascinated with this empty soda can. And I would throw it out into the ocean and watch it come back. I didn't want to play with all the cool beach toys that my parents brought. I wanted to play with the Coke can. And I just kept throwing it out there, and it just kept coming back, throwing it out there, coming back, throwing it out there, coming back. I did this for like 20 minutes. Then finally I get bored, and I turn around, and my family's gone. I'm like freaking out, crying. And sure enough, they didn't actually leave. They're like 100 yards down the beach. Now, how did that happen? You see, every time you throw the soda can out, the ocean current brings it back a little bit further. And you throw it out again. And little by little by little, you get off course. And so that's the thing about prayer, is God can keep you on course. God can keep you anchored in place. And all of that happens in the conversation you have with him on a regular basis. You guys have big futures. Don't you want to stay on course? The verse that I want to use tonight that I really enjoy, it's one of my favorite verses, Romans 12, 2. It says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Think about this for a second. Renewing of your mind. See, there's two things that are going on there. There's conforming. And there's transforming. You see, conforming means you got to fit in. Conforming means to be like other people. But transforming is what God does to you. He takes you and he transforms you into the person that you're supposed to be. But how is it done? It's by renewing your mind. See, all of the things I just talked about, the decisions you'll make, the goals that you have, the battles that you'll fight, all of that is one here. So you have to renew your mind. Discouragement takes place. Fear happens. Anger. All of these things, when things aren't going your way, God says, come to me, and I'm going to transform you into the person that you're supposed to be by the renewing of your mind. And so I want you to look at that. I want you to think about that in, in terms of uh, of prayer and how God transforms you. And so I want to go through, and I told you, I promised you, I promised you that we were going to do something very practical, and I'm going to teach you how to pray. And so a lot of people will use this method. It's, it's called the ACTS method, A-C-T-S. And each one of those things, it's an acronym, it stands for something. And the reason why I'm giving you this is because sometimes people are like, I don't know how to pray. I don't know what to pray for. And the great thing about this method is, is each one of these things matter. And so the ACTS method will give you something, kind of mentally, a blueprint to follow along as you pray. If you want to learn how to pray, if you want to get better at it. You know, Mark was talking about this last week. You know how you learn how to pray? By praying. 
You just do it. And little by little by little, you start to understand the relationship, the conversation that goes on, the importance of what is said. And so the Acts method will give you the blueprint to follow along, and you fill it in. I'm not going to tell you exactly what to say, but I'm giving you things to hit. And so the first one is A, adoration. So each one, you can see them all, adoration, confession, thanksgiving, and supplication. And so we're going to go through each one of these, but you fill it in. It's just the blueprint. It's the skeleton, and you fill in with your own personal stuff. Remember what I was saying. God wants to hear your voice. God wants to hear your pain. God wants to hear what's going on with you. And what happens is this conversation transforms you in the end. And so let's go through one by one. Adoration. Let's start with adoration. So adoration, look at it, it's about praising God for who he is. You see, I think a lot of the time we don't really praise God for who he is. We praise God for what he does. But the truth is, is that God is amazing. He's wonderful. He's good. And he's loving. And his promises are true. And he never goes back on those. And he loves you in such a way, a love that you look for everywhere else but you don't get in the world is unconditional love. And that's how God loves you. And so whenever we praise him, it takes us to a place. See, that's the thing. That's the most important part is, is that you're not praising God. He's not some egomaniac who feels like everyone has to praise him. No, no, no. You praising God changes you. That's the most important part. That's the thing that you have to understand is that as you go through each one of these things, it's less about God and more about you. And praising God reminds us how awesome he is. You see, we live in a world where everybody has an opinion. Everyone is telling you what to do. Everyone feels like they're an influencer. And so who, who do you follow? And so you can get off course because people will tell you something, but maybe they're lying to you. The devil is a liar, and he wants to get you off course. He doesn't want you to realize your destiny. He doesn't want your God-given destiny to come, come true. He wants you to be off course. And so he'll put people in your life that will tell you things that are not true. But when you go and pray and you adore God, when you praise him, you are saying, God, you are the one who is worthy. You are the one who I have chosen to follow. You are the one who I will praise. I'm not going to follow these people. I'm not going to give them the time of day. And as you sit in prayer and talk about how awesome God is, and you will never run out of things to praise God for. But as you do that, little by little, you're changing your mind. Do you see that? Do you see the shift? That's not for God. He's not sitting around going, that's right. Yep, keep it coming. Yep. How, and, and how good do I look today? No, no, no. That's not how God is. He's not petty like that. It's changing you. It's transforming you. It's changing your priorities. Do you see that? Do you see how that, that works out? And so as you start off, it's a great way to start because you're praising God for all that he is. And you're renewing your mind. The second one, confession, this is kind of the hardest one. And, and I don't blame you. know, I, I struggle with the same thing. You know, you, you go before God and you're just like, oh, God, this is what I don't want to like. But yeah, I know what I did. But the truth is, it's important. This part is very important. And so I just, I just swallow the pill, man. You just got to get there. Oh, okay, I did this. I treated that person, I wasn't really right, I, I said this, I looked at that online, like it just all of the things, you, you, you just lay it out there. And it, it, it's not like God is sitting like with a checklist, like checking things off, like, no, you screwed this up, wait, 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 hold on, no, 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 we're not done yet, because we've got a whole list of things that you did. That's not what it's about. You see, confession is important for a couple of reasons. One, first of all, it says... I agree with you that these things are wrong. I agree with you because 
the world will say, no, that's not wrong. Whatever feels right to you is right. There's no moral right or wrong. See, the world lies to you. That's, that's how the devil works. He gets you off course. He'll just say, really? That's not really. That's exactly what happened in the Garden of Eden, right? The, the serpent is there, and he's talking to Eve, and he's like, come on, really? You're going to die if you eat the fruit? But that's how, that's how that slow pull works. It's never one big decision, just like I was throwing the can, little by little by little. And then all of a sudden, you're in a place that you never thought you would be. Because you were slowly convinced that these things are okay. And so when you pray and you talk to God and you say, ah, you know, I messed up. You're saying, I agree with you that these things are, are, are wrong. But here's the other thing. Is you're not just saying, okay, I did this, this, and this. Forgive me. No, you're asking for real change. You see, you'll have difficult things in your life. You'll make mistakes. God does not expect you to be perfect. That's not how it is. But he's going to give you the ability and the power and the strength to overcome. Y'all might not be plagued with bad habits already, or maybe you are. You see, when you go to God and say, I, I agree, this stuff is wrong. I don't want to do it anymore. So that's what David did. After David screwed everything up, he made a bunch of mistakes. He said he went with a broken and contrite heart. Contrite means you hate it. I hate the sin. I don't want to do that. I don't want to, that to get me off course. I don't want this, that to screw up my life. I don't want that to mess up my relationships. I don't want that. And God says, good, that's, now we're in the right place. It's not just about ticking off a bunch of mistakes. That's not how it works. And God doesn't need to hear what you did wrong. He already knows. And he's just waiting for you to come back to him. You see, the most important thing that happens when you're confessing is you clean off the slate. Jesus says, all who are heavy burdened, come to me, and I will give you rest. Like, have you ever had something weighing over your shoulders, weighing over your head, and you're just like, oh, my gosh, I just don't want to deal with this, is it? It's too hard. See, that's, that's the way Jesus works, is he comes in and he goes, let me take it. I've paid for it already. I knew what you did. You remember, I know the end from the beginning. I know all the mistakes you made, and I paid for it on the cross. He just wants you to come before him and restore the relationship. That's what happens. This isn't just going through the motions of religion. Taking the burden off so that you can walk away lighter and freer. And he's going to help you overcome the things that you struggle with. We all struggle with stuff. Don't think that you're different. We all have something. God says, come to me. I'm going to work it out. We're going to do it together. And so each step is really important. So the next one, Thanksgiving. Now, Thanksgiving is how you show appreciation for all that God has done. See, this is where I kind of get things mixed up some of the time. I, I start off with Thanksgiving. I don't know why. I'm just always thanking God for what he's done. But here's, the, here's the, the big part about this one. If you stand here today and you're like, how do I have a relationship with a God that I cannot see? We've all been there at some point. I don't, I, don't, I don't see God. I don't feel him. I don't, I don't know. I don't understand. I can't touch him. I didn't read about him in my science book. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, see, here's the thing, is that if you want to have a relationship with God, if you want to see his fingerprints in your life, start looking for things to thank, for, thank him for. Because his actions are everywhere. The Bible says, all good and perfect gifts come from above. 
So if something good happened in your life, that's God blessing you. Imagine if you had a friend or a family member and, and they were constantly leaving you little notes, little encouragements, little gifts. Every time you opened up your backpack, there was something in there. You're like, oh, look. Or maybe there was a little post-it note. Hey, I love you. See, that's how God works. In every moment, in every day, there's always something to see that God is doing because he is working all around you, but you have to see it. You have to open your eyes to the things that God is doing in your life, and when you start to see it, when it finally clicks, you're like, oh, he is present in my life. His fingerprints are everywhere. He is doing things. He is working in my life. He is helping me. He is changing me. He is blessing me. And now I see it. You see, God doesn't need your thank you. He's good. He's going to be good no matter what. He's not sitting around like, oh, he better thank me for this one. That was a good one. No. Oh, great. Didn't thank me again. Awesome. Try to ask me next time. No, 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 that's not how God works. You see, creating a heart of gratitude changes you. Each one of these things transforms you. When you praise God, it changes you. When you confess, it changes you. When you thank him, it changes you. He is turning you into this person, this grateful person, this wonderful person, this person who when you see that God has blessed you so many times that you're going to go out and bless other people. You're not meant to be a dead end for your blessing. Do you get that? The things that you have in your life are not supposed to dead end with you. You're supposed to be a conduit. You are blessed to be a blessing. And God wants you to go out and be a blessing to somebody else. Imagine, I mean, think about this for a second. What if you were kind to him and he was thoughtful to her and she uplifted him and he encouraged her and it went like this again and again and again. It swirled around. Wouldn't you want to live in a place like that where we were kind to each other, where we were thoughtful and loving and caring and it went like that on earth as it is in heaven? He's blessing you. And if you want to have a relationship with him, a God that you might not be able to see in physical form, look for his fingerprints. And when you start to thank him, you start to see it. And the last one is supplication. Supplication is when you ask God for what you need. Some people jump right into this. But here's... here's Here's the problem, is that it needs to be at the end. And here's why. Some of the time we go to God with things that maybe don't make any sense. Maybe you've got something selfish, or maybe you've got something dumb, or maybe whatever it is. Like, we, we all kind of have these, these things. But see, God works on us throughout the process. When you go to God and you praise him for all that he is, you've confessed and you've poured out your heart and he's forgiven you and you feel lighter because of it. And then you've thanked him for what he's already done. Then you are finally in a place to ask for something. It's the transformation process. Do you see it? He's, he's, he's changing you into somebody who wants what he wants. He's changing you into someone who isn't selfish and doesn't just want for themselves and, and, and doesn't ask for material things. You see, that's the transformation process. He's working on you. He's working on each and every one of us. And this happens in that time, in that, 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 that conversation, that daily conversation. It's, it, it's the transformation process, right? Right? Like, for me, it, I always struggled with this. I never asked God for anything. Because the truth is, is, like, the Bible says God knows what you want before you open your mouth. And I would probably ask for something dumb. But the conversation I have with him changes me. And it changes what I want. Listen to this. There's a couple of verses like this. And, and I always found it troubling. It's difficult. Man, I'm not that smart. John 15, 7 says, If you remain in me and follow my teachings... Watch this. You can ask for anything you want, and it will be given to you. 
anything? Like, anything? There's like three or four verses that are like this. Ask and you will receive. Knock and it'll be open. And some people get mixed up and they have this prosperity idea that you can just ask God for anything like he's some cosmic vending machine. Just pull the lever, put the quarter in, say my prayer, ask for the thing. No, see, this is the thing is God is transforming you. He, he's, he's lifting you up. He's changing you. He's turning you into the person that you were meant to be through the conversation that you have with him. And so all of these steps are important. Now, originally it was Acts. And I thought about putting another S on there because really at the end of all of this, you need a little bit of time to let God speak back to you. And that's where meditation comes in. Because, I mean, think about it. Imagine if you called a friend of yours and you're like, hey, what's going on? And you talked to you, you're talking to you, you said a bunch of stuff, and you asked for something, and they said, okay, bye. And the friend was like, well, wait, wait, God. But I wanted to, I had something for you. And so that's where meditation comes in. At the end of your prayer, just sit for a second. They've been doing this awesome Selah moment uh, in, in, in worship time. But like the meditation, go to the next slide. Meditation is, meditation means to take the time to think about what God is trying to show you. I can't tell you how many times that I've prayed and I'm praying for something and I'm just sitting there and just this impression comes on my heart and I'm just like, what? Uh, oh, the answer. I'm not, I'm not kidding you. I'm not just saying this because I'm teaching tonight. I have done it again and again and again, just begging God, praying for something that's important to me. And in that time of prayer, the impression comes. And I'm like, oh, dude, that's not the answer I really wanted. I got to do that. But yes, it's the answer. Yes, it's what you need to do. See, that's the thing, is that God will give you answers, but you have to let him speak back. You have to sit and be quiet for a moment. And that's what meditation is, sitting and thinking about what God is trying to say to you. So many times God is reaching out to you. I just, I want you to know this, and you need to understand, God is reaching out to you all the time. If there is a song that a line catches you, God's trying to get your attention. If there is, is something that I said, I don't know how that happened, but if, if there was something there that stuck with you, God's trying to get your attention. And so you should always grab onto that, take it home and sit and think about it. God, what are you trying to say to me? And that's what this process is about. God is trying to get your attention. God is trying to transform you. God is trying to transform you by the renewing of your mind. And that happens through your conversation with him. You see, the two things that are going on in this verse that I showed you before, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. See, the two things are, you can either conform and be like everybody else, because that's what fitting in is, really. I mean, think about it. Fitting in means like you have to fit into what other people are doing or what other people want from you. But God says, no, 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 I have something better in store for you, but I have to transform you into that. And I'm going to do it by the renewing of your mind. I'm going to bring you back. Just like I was throwing that can out over and over and over again, slowly but surely, I got off course. But God says, you talk to me on a regular basis, and I'm going to make your path straight. I'm going to keep you on a course to become the person that I created you to be. Do you get that? The world wants you to be like everybody else. The world wants you to do what everybody else does. The world wants you to fit in with what everyone else is doing. I would love to see a group of young people who do not fall into the traps of what the world has for you. You don't have to be like everybody else. You don't have to drink. You don't have to do drugs. You don't have to be one of those people who just does what everyone else does. God wants you to be who he created you to be. 
I would love for you to grow up and not fall into all of those traps and not be like everybody else. I don't want you to conform. I want you to be transformed. And it all starts here by the renewing of your mind through the conversation that you have with God. The Bible says that that hope in Jesus is the anchor to your soul. That's the anchor. It keeps you in place. It keeps you from wandering off. It keeps you from getting lost. That's the anchor. It's the conversation. God knows who you int- he intended you to be. He knows what you're supposed to become. He gives you incredible gifts. He puts stuff in there that he knows. You don't even know how it's going to work out, but he knows. He left stuff out you might be angry about. But he created you to be something better than you are. He says, I'm going to transform you. But I need you to talk to me. I need you to have a conversation with me. And I'm going to take you there. Let's pray.